Okay, now let's go over some notation just to remind ourselves we're talking about both fitted models that we have here, model one and model two, and we're talking about the overfit instance, the instance where we fit model two, but model one is true. Okay, so if this is the case, and let me let S2 squared be equal to the residual variance fit under model two, and S1 squared is equal to the residual variance fit under model one, and this is the correct model. Okay, and uh, uh, just to recall, x1 is going to be n by p1, x2 is going to be n by p2. Okay, now in both cases we fit the correct model. So in both of these cases, say for example, n minus, and then let me let p equal to p1 plus p2. Okay, so n minus p s2 squared over sigma squared is going to be chi squared n minus p. And then also, because it is the correct model, n minus p1 s1 squared over sigma squared is also going to be chi squared n minus p1. Okay? So, what we can do is we can then calculate the variance of n minus p1 s2 squared over sigma squared, which is just the variance of a chi squared, which is twice its degrees of freedom. So that's 2n minus p. Oh, that's not a p1 there, that's a p. Okay. Okay, but that's equal to n minus p squared over sigma to the fourth variance of s2 squared. Okay. So, and we can do the same calculation for the variance and, and find the variance of s1 squared, okay? And then when we do that, we can calculate what is the variance of s2 squared divided by the variance of s1 squared, in which case all the unknown parameters will drop out and we'll see that it's exactly n minus p1 squared over n minus p, which is minus p1 minus p2 squared, okay? Which means that the variance of S2 is going to be larger than the variance of S1. The numerator, this, this number is always going to be greater than 1. Okay, so what does this imply? This implies that even though our residual variance estimate is going to be unbiased, the variance of our variance estimate is going to be higher when we include unnecessary covariance. Okay, which means more extremely positive, more extremely uh, large estimates of the variance than we should get, and more extremely small estimates of the variance than we, than we should otherwise have. So this is a huge problem if we include a lot of unnecessary regressors in our regression estimate. Our residual variance estimate gets more variable. Okay, and then there's another consequence to throwing in regression variables into a, a model, and that is this concept of variance inflation. And so next we're going to go through variance inflation. Variance inflation is something that occurs regardless of whether or not you are overfitting or underfitting the model, but it's clearly uh, what we're thinking of now is what happens if we, as a solution to underfitting, throw lots of extra variables in the model. And we're seeing already that it's a bad idea. Yes, we do get rid of bias, but on the other hand, we will have increased the variability of our variance estimate, which itself has quite a, which introduces a problem.